Hey guys, uh, welcome back. You're looking again at that uh, speaker I was showing yesterday where I was trying to understand or uh, use a different technique to uh, validate the uh, polarity of the voice coil. And uh, I want to reuse this. I've already um, checked the DC resistance of the field coil. It's in great shape. I know where it, uh, where it resides. Um, the output transformer tests well also. DC resistance wise, but it's important to understand the output transformer to make sure it's a great match for the uh, radio that I uh, may use it in. So uh, let me show you the steps that I take to do that. To better understand the output transformer and know if I can use it or know what radio I'll be limited to using it in, there's really uh, two factors or three. They tie together. I need to understand, again, the turns ratio of the transformer and I can use the turns ratio to understand the impedance ratio. And of course we need to understand the uh, voice coil itself and understand what the impedance of that voice coil is. Uh, there's a formula for doing that or I have another piece of uh, software that uh, I think I can hook up and we'll try to do that in just a bit just to confirm the uh, calculated number. So let's start out here by uh, just using an audio signal generator and uh, hook it up here to the uh, primary side of the output transformer. Read the output side and uh, let's calculate the turns ratio. Okay, we'll flip on the uh, generator here and again this is very very basic you can see, uh, nothing fancy. Um, I've got my amplitude uh, turned down. I'm going to generate a uh, audio carrier somewhere around uh, 1,000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. And uh, we'll just bring it up. Again, I've got my uh, connection points here from the uh, signal generator uh, tied again back to the uh, input side of the output transformer. And I'm just using my uh, fluke meter here looking again at the AC voltage on the output side. So what I like to do is uh, just use a very low level voltage and uh, what I'm going to do is bring this up uh, ever so slowly here to 0 0.10 and I'll show you the uh, just how simple this is. So again I'm just uh, adjusting the output gain here. You can see the attenuation of the signal and you can see I'm at my uh, point one zero. Let me just uh, bring this back down just a bit. See if I can get it to lock there. Okay, you can see I'm locked in and it's uh, fairly steady there, 0 0.10. So now I'm only going to do is just take my uh, leads here from the output and I'm going to go back over here and measure my uh, input source and uh, see what that is. And you can see here on the meter that my input source is 4.42. So to get the turns ratio, and I'll show this in a picture-in-picture picture as well, all I need to do is just take the 4.41 and divide that by the 0 0.10, and that'll come out to 44.1, or 44. Or I can just take the 4.40 times 10 to get 44. So the turns ratio for this particular output transformer is 44 to 1. Now let's look at the impedance ratio. Okay guys, let's recap here. Again, the output transformer I'm showing here. Again, just calculating the turns ratio. Again, um, just a basic uh, transformer drawing. Again, you can see the primary side, more windings. As the audio, it steps down. Um, again, I had my signal generator hooked up here at this point on the primary, generating a tone roughly at uh, 1 kilohertz. That's not uh, crazy important, so don't worry about that. I just need to make sure I've got enough gain 
out of the input unit to be able to drive this real low level reading. That's uh, easy to do. That's why I like working with such a low voltage here, only uh, 100 millivolts or 0 0.10 volts. Uh, again, I'm adjusting my gain or attenuation on the uh, signal generator until I get that output. And then I'm removing my uh, uh, meter from this location, going back and just reading the uh, input voltage at that point of the sine wave. Again, I could use an oscilloscope or alternate method for uh, reading the uh, voltage. I just again elected to use my uh, meter. 4.40 volts, um, divide that by the 0 0.10, you come up again with uh, 44. Or I could simply just take 4.40 times 10, 44. That's why I like using this number in my head, because I can just take whatever number I end up getting times 10, and that will be my uh, ratio. Again, in this case, 44 to 1 would be the turns ratio. Now, um, to calculate the impedance uh, ratio, is simply just taking the uh, turns ratio and you're squaring that number. So you're just taking the 44 by itself. 44 times 44 equals 1936. And again, that would be 1936 to 1, and that becomes our impedance ratio. So now, uh, for example, and I'll use the uh, speaker here that we're looking at, or have been looking at, if the voice coil has an impedance of, say, 4 ohms, and that's what this one has roughly. We'll test that or try to validate that on the uh, hardware that I have. Um, but it reads a little over 3 ohms. If you multiply that by 1, 2, 5, or 1 and a half, uh, you're somewhere around 4 ohms of uh, impedance. So again, you would have uh, 4 ohms, and the impedance reflected back to the primary side of the transformer or the output tube would be the 1936 times the uh, 4 ohms. For the impedance of the voice coil comes out to be 7744. So you can see here, I just put some examples down. Let me move this up just a bit so it's in view. But um, if we had a 2 ohm voice coil uh, with this particular turns ratio and impedance ratio, my load resistance for the particular output tube uh, that I would be using would need to be somewhere around 3,800, 3,900 load resistance in the uh, tube manuals, and we'll, I'll show that in just a bit. 3 ohms, 4 ohms, 5, all the way up to 8. So you can see if I were to use a modern day speaker um, times the 8, you can see how it really changes the uh, load resistance. So um, it may seem simple to take one of these old uh, vintage radios and most of the uh, voice coils, at least the ones I've dealt with, are always down here in the, uh, you know, I've had many that were in the 2 ohm factor up to about 5 ohms or so, not 8 ohms until you get into the latter uh, radios. Um, this could have a real big impact on uh, using this particular output transformer successfully without creating uh, distortion or really just a loss of clarity, etc. And also just not making the uh, tube efficient. So again, you know, we, you know, we need the load resistance of the tube, um, you know, based on the operating voltage. And operating voltage is um, something you need to really look at in the tube manuals because they'll spec them out at 100 and something, usually 250 or above, and you'll see that the uh, load resistance may change for the uh, tube or the value based on the operating voltage. So um, hope this helps to this part. So um, let me grab my uh, tube manual. Let's just take a look at a couple uh, tubes and uh, see what we can find that has a uh, load resistance um, somewhere around um, 8,000 or so that I could actually use this particular output transformer in. All right, you're looking at the uh, RCA tube manual. Again, we're going to look at the 6F6. Uh, the things I really want to look at here, again, will be the uh, load resistance here. 7,000, 7,000. I want to look at my operating voltage. Again, 250, 285. So again, the uh, load resistance uh, for this particular uh, tube is somewhere, again, around 7,000, so it would be a good match. Again, if you're using a triode connection itself, 4,000. 
used in a pentode uh, connection, uh, you would be good with this output transformer. All right, here's another good example, the uh, 6 V6, 6 Victor 6. Again, you can see the load resistance here spec'd out at uh, 5500 for 180 volts. Drops down to 5,250, then at 315, around 8,500 again. That's in a Class A. Um, I'm sure there's folks out there that uh, better know. I'm not sure what percent of variance you should look for, but uh, I would guess if you're within 10% uh, or so, you would be in good shape. Um, somebody out there knows what that number, how it was calculated and stuff, plus or minus, it'd be good to know if you could drop that in the uh, comments on the video. I would appreciate that just for my edification. So uh, let's move along now and uh, try to get some uh, hardware hooked up and see if we can test the uh, voice coil itself and understand what the impedance of that uh, voice coil actually is.